Hello and welcome to the lecture series on monetary economics. In the previous classes, we have seen the idea of regional rural banks and also the evolution of the regional rural banks in the Indian context. Today, I'll be talking about the functions of regional rural banks. So let's get started. The first function is talking about granting of loans and advances to weaker sections of rural population. Now, these weaker sections in the rural population includes, it includes small and marginal farmers, it includes agricultural laborers, it includes artisans and small entrepreneurs in the rural parts of the country, as well as those individuals or firms who are engaged into agriculture and allied activities and other productive activities in the rural parts of the countries. So this is again one of the very important functions of regional rural banks to cater to the credit needs of these individuals or sections of rural population in the country. So this is the first point of function when I'm talking about regional rural banks in the Indian context. Let us now move to the next question, which is talking about granting of loans and advances to cooperative societies. Now these cooperative societies can be in the form of marketing societies, or they can be in the form of agricultural processing societies, or they can be in the form of cooperative farming societies, or it can be in the form of primary agricultural credit societies, which is again an important part of the cooperative banking structure, which is the uh, grassroots level, which is operating at the grassroots level in the rural parts of the countries and various other organizations which are related to agriculture and its allied activities. So again, the regional rural banks are also catering to the needs of credit from this perspective, which is towards the cooperative societies in different forms and shapes. So this is again an important point of function of the res uh, of the rural uh, regional rural banks to be very precise. I hope these two points are pretty much clear. Let us now move to the next point, which is talking about taking banking to the doorsteps. Now you can take banking to the doorsteps of rural masses and Particularly, you are going to take these banking services to the unbanked sectors in rural parts of the country. So this is again a very important thing that this also includes in a sense semi-urban parts as well. But since we are talking about regional rural banks, let us uh, uh, restrict ourselves to the rural parts of the country. But these effectively also cater towards semi-urban areas. That means you are taking banking services to the doorsteps of rural masses and to the doorsteps of certain masses which do not have formal access to credit or they are belonging to an area which is called as unbanked region or unbanked sector. So this is how the function of regional rural bank can be understood. Let us now move to the next function of regional rural bank which is again an important function which relates to the mobilization of savings in rural parts of the country by accepting deposits and channelizing them for various productive activities both they are related to agriculture as well as any other productive activity that is happening in the rural part of the country so again mobilizing of savings from the rural parts of the country is a function relating to regional rural banks in india so I hope this point is pretty much clear. Let us now move to the next point, which is talking about to create a channel for free flow. Here I'm talking about free flow of credit from the urban parts. Now, this is very important free flow of credit from urban parts of the country towards rural parts of the country. So again, in a sense, the regional rural bank is again uh, following or creating some space or, or making sure as a function that the credit from the rural parts of the country or the surplus from the rural parts of the country is channelized towards the urban parts of the country in, in, in a free manner. So this is how again an important function is rendered by regional rural banks in the Indian contexts. Let us now move to the next function which is talking about employment opportunities and it goes like this to generate employment opportunities in rural areas. Now, what the regional rural banks are doing, they are also helping generate employment opportunities in the rural parts of the country. This is happening explicitly as well as implicitly. That means directly as well as indirectly and directly in the sense that the bank itself will take up or suck up the educated youth as well as uh, ex indirectly, meaning thereby this bank will give 
funds or credited to an institution which is already operating in the rural parts it will start expanding its business and therefore employ more individuals from the rural parts of the country so this is how you can see that regional rural banks are generating employment both directly as well as indirectly so i hope this point is pretty much clear let us now move to the last point which is talking about the functions of the regional rural banks in the indian context now what is happening is this makes sure the regional rural banks meaning thereby it makes sure that the the cost of supplying credit to the rural areas goes down meaning thereby both it is cheap in terms of the rate of interest which is being charged and also it is coming from an institutional source meaning thereby from a formal source and as a result of that the supplying cost of credit to the uh, populace is is going to go down and this is again a very important uh, fundamental function of of regional rural banks in the indian context so i hope the idea of functions of a regional rural bank is pretty much clear first of all it was catering towards the loans and advances of rural populace then it was also catering towards the loans and advances of different cooperative societies thereafter we moved towards the doorsteps of individuals who are not considered to be in the formal banking structure or they are also associated as unbanked sections or sectors of the society thereafter we talked about the rural mobilization of rural savings then we talked about how to channelize funds from urban parts of the country towards the rural parts of the country thereafter generating both indirect and direct employment opportunities and lastly i talked about lowering the cost of supplying credit in the rural parts of the country so these are some of the important points which uh, one should understand or one should look at whenever the concept of functions of regional rural banks in the indian context is discussed so i hope the idea is pretty much clear please stay tuned thank you